So what can be done to reduce accidents? Working with Britain's top road safety experts at the Transport Research Laboratory, we brought an e-scooter onto this test track. This is a 9Bot uh, Max by Segway. It's fairly typical, so it's, it's used by some of the shared e-scooter operators. But it's important to understand that there is a lot of variability in the specifications. Nathan will conduct each of three tests using a bicycle too, to see how it compares. Both will be ridden at the same speed, but no faster than 15.5 miles an hour, the maximum outlined by the trial regulations. First up, potholes. Planks of wood will simulate the bump that a pothole would cause and these sensors will measure stability. The bicycle rides through with ease. The e-scooter manages the pothole but the sensors show it was much less stable. How did that feel? It was harder to maintain stability, I thought. There was definitely more of a kind of a shudder and a fight for control with the e-scooter. Because the e-scooter's e got the, the smaller wheels, it's got the lower centre of gravity. Yes, when you've got cars around you, I don't think I'd really want to be hitting a bump that significant. Next up, indicating. The e-scooter holds its own. The sensors suggest the stability was the same as the bike. But Nathan says he found it harder on the scooter. I've ridden a bike more than I've ever ridden one of these. I suppose all of the things I'm thinking about feel more natural. If you pick one of these up and start riding it around the city first time, I think you would have to make sure that you were, you were focusing quite hard. Finally, many of us will remember from learning to drive the emergency stop. In dry conditions, the e-scooter had a much greater stopping distance, around three metres longer than the bike. Well, how did that feel? I mean, yeah, it felt pretty stable, but certainly the deceleration, it wasn't as, as hard as the bike. This is quite different uh, and, yeah. and perhaps points to a need for training. In terms of the specifics of fundamental and essential things like braking distance, I think you'd certainly need some kind of training for e-scooters. Dr George Beard says our tests show e-scooters need careful consideration. It's important that people make sure they get used to these vehicles before sort of going headfirst into, into busy, dangerous environments. There's a role for training. You say um, a, ro a role for training, you think it should be compulsory on some of these rental schemes? I think there's probably a good argument for some sort of training. You need safe users, so that's where the training piece comes in. You need safe infrastructure. It's a much more complex environment in the real world.